Hey Norek, back to a new video. A couple of weeks ago we were testing the Thermal Ride Burst Assassin 120, which has an outstanding price performance ratio. With about 45 euros, this cooler comes with an LCD equipped and was just performing super nice. Now, if you take the same cooler without the LCD, it would cost about 28 euros. That would be the Burst Assassin 120 Evo Dark. So it's about the same price as a Freezer 36, slightly cheaper. And in the comments section, I figured out that a lot of people were asking for the comparison between the two to figure out which one is better at the same like 30 euro price range. And also, what about cheap AIOs? So there is the Thermalright Aqua Elite 120, which costs 33 euros. So I, I would say it's roughly the same price. It's three euros more expensive. And the question for me would be, is a 120 AIO worth it? Is it better? Is it worse? I honestly don't even know. And then there is also, if you want to spend 44 euros, the Aqua Elite 240mm version. So it's slightly more expensive, but double the radiator size. And I just want to find out what's the best and cheapest solution at the same time. Upgrade to Ultra Class. Meet the new Hetzner EX63, powered by the Intel Core Ultra 7 265 with 20 cores. Your ultimate all-rounder for any project. 12 efficiency cores take care of background tasks, while 8 performance cores deliver serious power for gaming, AI or rendering. Benchmarks show the EX63 sits between the AX52 and the AX102. Top performance at great price. Get started from 76 euro 52 per month and save 15 euro on cloud and storage products using the code Stabauer15. Hetzner, the digital foundation for businesses and projects with high performance servers and data centers. We will again start with the Burst Assassin 120, this time without the screen, we just don't need it. And we will compare two different states. First of all, we compare at the same noise level, so 40 decibels out of 30 centimeters distance to figure out which of the coolers will cool better at the same noise level. And then the secondary test will be at max fan speed to see which one keeps the CPU colder. I will test all the coolers with the same thermal paste for comparison reasons and it's going to be cryonaut extreme. We will test everything on AM5 again just because it's currently the much more common platform with 9800X 3D. The CPU is also running at uh, fixed values, so it's easier to compare 5.15 GHz, 1.25 volt vCore, LLC level 5 and also open PBO. I will test this again with Prime95 running for a total of 20 minutes and after a 10 minutes heat up phase that is currently running, I will reset hardware info and then lock the average CPU temperature over 10 minutes. You can see the power consumption currently is about 145 watts. And in this case, it's 87.9 degrees Celsius. And as I said, we will repeat the same test again with 100% fan speed. But the difference here is smaller than I expected. It's 86.3 degrees Celsius. And with this, we're already switching over to the Arctic Freezer 36. And I will repeat the same tests again with the Freezer 36. And in the first test, we have about 85.7 degrees Celsius, which is about 2 degrees Celsius better than the thermal ride. And of course, again, the test with 100% fan speed. And at that state, the CPU reached 84.9 degrees Celsius. Now this should be quite interesting because it's a very recent AIO, but with a small surface area. Nobody is really using 120 millimeter AIOs these days because of the small surface area, which is why AIOs most of the time are superior to air coolers. If you have like a 360 AIO, it's just very much surface area and also it's water cooling. So that's why most of the AIOs will outperform air coolers. But with this small surface area, I'm not so sure. This is really cute. And also price-wise, with like 33 euros, super interesting. Also, the only RGB device in today's test still being cheap. Looks actually quite nice, I can't deny that. But might also look different in a case, especially if you have a bigger case. A 120 AAO can easily look like it's fully lost in there. It is still so difficult to predict for me if this will beat the air coolers or not. I just started the testing, you can see it's still the same condition and it will just depend how much it will heat up now. And here we have the result, 88.4 degrees Celsius. This means at least noise normalized, the 120 millimeter AIO is three degrees Celsius worse roughly than the Freezer 36. And now I'm testing at 100% fan speed, but I don't think it will make a huge difference because the fan was already running in BIOS at about 80% fan speed. And as expected, almost no difference, 87 degrees Celsius. 
The last thing I want to test is the same AIO in a 240mm version, so just double the surface area of the radiator, how much that helps, and if this will be able to bring the AIO in front of the Freezer 36. However, this is a different price category with about 44 euros. Still super cheap, but not quite comparable. One thing to remember is that two fans are louder than a single fan. That also means that I had to go down from 80% fan speed to 73% fan speed to maintain the 40 decibels. And this looks a lot better and you can see how much the surface area helps. It's decreasing to 80.1 degrees Celsius. And with this I'm able to run my final test, which is again at 100% fan speed. And the max fan speed doesn't even help to reduce it by 1 degree Celsius. At the end we see 79.4 degrees Celsius. Now in this chart the results are a bit easier to digest and we are first looking at the result at the same noise level. So that's 40 decibels out of 30 centimeters distance. And in this condition the Freezer 36 with 85.7 degrees Celsius is just performing absolutely great. And very close behind is the Burst Assassin 120 with 87.9 degrees Celsius. The 120mm AIO is performing the worst and the 240 AIO the best with 80.1 degrees Celsius and that's quite a bit better than all of the air coolers. At max fan speed the range ranking will remain the same, it's just the absolute temperature that is changing and you can also see that all of the coolers are in the same kind of noise range with 42 to 47 decibels under max load. In the end the Freezer 36 is still a great option, especially if you look at the price performance ratio. But I also have to point out that the Burst Assassin is not much worse. We are seeing 2 degrees Celsius difference which is at max load, but if you're looking for a gaming PC for example and you're just looking at gaming load, you will hardly see a difference between the two and then you can probably also select which one you like in terms of the design better or in terms of availability or then when it comes down to the pricing this one might be one or two euros cheaper if that is a thing for you. When it comes to AIOs 120mm versions just don't make sense because you're so limited due to the surface area that you will lose versus even the very cheap air coolers and they are cheaper than the AIO only when switching to more surface area thus for example 240 millimeter version you will see a much bigger advantage. Also one thing to consider about AIOs is the pump that will have two negative aspects. First of all is the noise level, sometimes you can hear the pump and secondly it's also a risk that something might fail which you don't have on an air cooler. And especially on those air coolers if you have two fans, even if one fan fails it will still work. It will lose a bit of performance but it will still work and having a heat pipe that fails is highly unlikely. Then again an AIO has the advantage that you can mount the radiator at different positions. For example you can have cold air intake which is especially with the recent Nvidia GPUs a very good thing. If you think of like a 5070 or 5080 these will dump a huge amount of hot air inside your case and then if you have an air cooler sitting directly on top of it this will intake the hot air and it will have a huge impact on your temperatures of the CPU and this is something you can avoid with an AIO. So that would be the advantage here, but then you shouldn't pick a 120mm version. Ultimately it's impressive what you get these days for your money, looking at a 30 or 40 euro AIO and then even the 30 euro air coolers, how well they perform. It's so impressive to see how this market is completely the opposite of the rest, where like motherboards and GPUs are getting more and more expensive. This is going in the opposite direction, which is def definitely nice to see. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time. Bye bye.